Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor Stephen Jurdy at Zion Lutheran Church in Wausau, Wisconsin, here to share with you a word at the middle of the week. As I promised last week, I'm beginning a new series today called Love Letters to Central Wisconsin. I've lived in Central Wisconsin for almost 20 years, serving the entire time as a pastor, first in Western Marathon County and now in Central Marathon County. And that ministry extends well beyond Marathon County to the surrounding area. I've loved living here. I love living among you. I love sharing the word of God with you. And so I thought it would be good to share some perspectives on our life here in central Wisconsin in the light of Holy Scripture and the word of God. To begin, a reading from Psalm 65. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we see in that passage, love of the land could loom large in the religious imagination of ancient Israel. The land of Canaan, the land of Israel, was given to the people of Israel as their heritage and as a blessing from God when he freed them from slavery in Egypt. The land, the land, the land. How to live in the land, how to enjoy the land, how to see in the land a blessing from God. It's a calling not only for ancient Israel, but it's also a calling for us today. I thought one of the best ways to begin our reflections on central Wisconsin is to think about the land in which we live. During the summers, when people talk about vacationing in Wisconsin, usually they talk about going to places like Door County or going up north to the lake country, maybe hitting the cities down south in Madison and Milwaukee. Very rarely, I think, will you hear anyone say, oh, we're headed to central Wisconsin. And yet, in the time that I have lived here, I have learned to love this land and to think it's, well, I probably shouldn't say it's the most beautiful place on earth because there's so much beauty in the earth and everyone thinks perhaps where they live is, is the most beautiful place. But I really think it is a place filled with stunning beauty. Central Wisconsin, as I'm thinking of it, actually extends over two different geological types of places in Wisconsin. There's the Northern Highlands and the Central Plains. The Northern Highlands uh, extend from Marathon County all the way up into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. They were once as high as the Rockies and the Appalachians, according to Wikipedia. I'm certainly no expert on any of this, but they've been worn down over time and they were the site of great forests of white pine once upon a time. And then the Central Plains, a little bit further south, reaching down into Portage and Wood County, are the places where you'll find the Buttes and the lower lands, the Cranberry Bogs, uh, places where they used to have a lot of tuber farming here in Central Wisconsin. So when I'm talking about Central Wisconsin, I'm talking about a space that spans those two types of land. In Marathon County, Lincoln County, Lang Lake, Oneida, Shano, um, Northern Clark County, we have that Northern Great Highland or that Northern Highlands, a little bit higher terrain uh, rolling into the forests and the lake country of what most people think of when they say up north. And then we also have south uh, in Wood County, Portage County, down around Wisconsin Rapids, places like Arpin and Pittsville, um, sort of that lower rolling uh, now agricultural land. It's, it's a beautiful place. Uh, we have Tim's, uh, Tim's Peak or Tim's, Mount, Tim's Hill. We have Rib Mountain. So we have high places, we have low places, we have beautiful rivers and valleys. We have rolling meadows that are thatchy with, uh, you know, golden, golden grasses in the autumn. And, and then we have all the beautiful cranberry bogs. We have places like the Eau Claire Dells, east of Wausau, uh, which are, you know, a beautiful low waterfall uh, with sparkling water. It's just 
any, anywhere you go around here, you can see beautiful land. At the same time, it's a land that has changed a great deal over the years. And many of the changes that have come to our land have been the result of the economic hopes of those who have lived here. In 1836, most of central Wisconsin was ceded, uh, was, was ceded by the Menominee tribes. They were forced to cede it over to the possession of the United States government. And thereafter, what happened was an explosion in lumbering and logging. And a great many of those beautiful, tall pine, white pine forests were, were decimated. Apparently, in, in one, from one location alone, enough wood was lumbered to build a boardwalk that could stretch around the whole earth, a nine foot wide boardwalk that could stretch around the whole earth, I don't know how many times. I mean, just a, an immense amount of wood was taken out of this land. That meant that it was deforested. And then when that lumbering industry started coming to an end around 1900, there was a shift towards agriculture. Originally, people tried to plant wheat around here and then it switched over into dairy farming. And there was dairy farming before 1900 as well, but that was the, the, general, the general shift. Now, here in the early 2000s, we see even the dairy farming industry struggling and in many ways ending. Uh, we're told that the number of dairy farms in Wisconsin are decreasing considerably, as much as 15% a year as people sell out. I was once talking with a bishop of the Mennonite church, and as we know, Mennonites are folks who typically have relied on agricultural living for their livelihood. And he said that the Mennonites are starting to think that they cannot make a living through farming either and are starting to look more into small business. And so there's been a lot of changes to our land here in central Wisconsin because of changes in how we have lived and sought to make a living, changes in who has lived on this land, and the question becomes, how do we think about that? How do we look at our land from the perspective of faith? How do we look at both the challenges of what we're look of the changes that are happening to us, the uncertainty of the future? Uh, when I was living in, in or doing ministry in Clark County, uh, which is part of my ministry over in Western Marathon County. One of the, even then, back in 2000, there were articles about how so many young people were leaving the central Wisconsin area to find work down south. And so our population is changing in central Wisconsin, and that causes changes in our culture and in how we live among our neighbors. How do we understand those changes in the light of faith? Well, there is one thing that I would hold up before you to guide you in that thinking, and that is this right here. This is a piece of the host or the communion bread that we use at Holy Communion. In the Lutheran Church, we believe that Holy Communion is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We believe it is his true body and blood. We don't use terms like transubstantiation, which is a term you might use or hear more frequently in the Roman Catholic Church in which they teach that the bread stops being bread and becomes the body of Christ. We believe that it is still bread, but it's also still also the body of Christ at the same time. The body of Christ is physically and substantially present uh, in the Holy Supper to be received by his people sacramentally for the strengthening of faith. And not only is his body present uh, in the bread, the bread is his body, but we also believe that the wine is his blood and that we truly receive uh, into our mouths and eat and drink the same stuff that was born of the Virgin Mary that died on the cross and that was raised again for our justification. This is an intimate and profound union with our Savior and it teaches us something about our land. Just think of that, that piece of bread and what has to happen for that piece of bread to be formed. Uh, there has to be grain raised from the land. There has to be farming for this bread to be made. There has to be farming of a type for the wine to be gathered off the vines and pressed into wine. When the Lord calls us to his holy supper, he is calling us to receive the fruit of his land, 
the fruit of creation, and yet it is more than just bread and wine. It is truly his body and blood as well. And so God conceals in the Holy Supper a wonderful mystery and a wonderful gift, union with his Son, union with the body that has suffered death for our sake and that has conquered death. And so he gives us in the Holy Supper bread and wine, food that truly feed. It feeds for eternal life. Finally, God has the food he wants us to have, food that truly nourishes us utterly and completely in a way that we can't even comprehend. So this is the fruit of the land, and yet it is more. And I think that's how we then turn back to the land in which we live. We look at that land and we see it is indeed land from which we may raise up a harvest. It is indeed land on which we may live and enjoy ourselves. And yet that land is more. It is ultimately God's land. And so we look at this land and we give thanks for it. That's one of the first things uh, we do. We turn to God. We praise him for the harvest. When we have a hunt, we praise him for the kill of the hunt. When we, um, when we have fun on the land, when we go skiing or when we go floating down a river, we praise God for the beauty of creation. This is not stuff that we possess ourselves. This is a gift given to us that then we raise up with thanksgiving to God. And we seek to use it and steward it in ways that honor God. Moreover, we not only give thanksgiving for this land, but we stand before it with a further humility, one that I don't think we always think about. But just as this bread bears the body of Christ and therefore bears the fruit not only of this world, but of a new creation that we have not yet seen with our eyes, it's good to look at this land in which we live and realize that it also has a future beyond our imagining. We are told in Romans chapter 8 that the whole creation will be set free from its bondage to decay by the merits and power of Christ when he comes again. When he died on the cross, he died for the whole world. He died for everything God had made to redeem this whole creation from its bondage to decay and from the effects of our sin. And so there will come a time when this land of central Wisconsin you know, will be more than that. I don't know what it will be, but it too will be liberated from its decay and it will inherit a glory that we have not yet seen and we can't even begin to imagine. And so when we stand before this land, we stand before it truly with humility, understanding ourselves to be sort of resident aliens here. We're at home here and yet there's a greater home that is on its way. And that this land also has a future in Christ um, that is greater than it's what it can do for us. And that calls us to humility. It calls us to care. It calls us to, lo to love this land. Uh, it calls us to, to be thankful God has placed us in this land and then to seek to use it in a way, as I said earlier, that honors him. Uh, Again, central Wisconsin is not where people normally say they're going to go hang out in the summer, right? Uh, although for some people, it is this is does count as up north. I once went down to a meeting in Madison. I had just lived here. I lived over in Spencer at the time. I think I'd only been there about six months. And I went down to that meeting, and they said, oh, where are you from? Very nice people. And they said, where are you from? And I said, oh, I'm from Spencer, small town. And they said, oh, where's that? And I said, oh, it's by Marshfield, thinking they would know. They did not know. They said, oh, Marshfield, where's that? And someone said, oh, that's way up north. And someone said, oh, you mean by Baraboo? Baraboo is probably, what, an hour northwest of Madison? Not even if you, you know, if you drive just so. Uh, back at that time, because they hadn't done the highway, uh, I think it took almost three hours to get from Spencer to, to Madison. So, uh, no, uh, Baraboo's not really up north unless maybe you live in Madison. And yeah, even Spencer and Marshfield are up north unless maybe you live in Madison. But it's all relative, right? And so this is a land that is sometimes forgotten by people. It's sometimes overlooked, but it's not overlooked by God. God has a destiny for the land on which we live. He has a destiny for you. 
He has revealed it in Jesus Christ is the redemption of our flesh through the forgiveness of our sins purchased by Christ upon the cross. All of that is for you. Thanks be to God. And you receive it. You receive the pledge and promise of it in Holy Communion in his body and blood. And so I encourage you to seek out a church where you may receive that body and blood of Christ. And now let us pray that we may receive it well. The Lord be with you. We do not presume to come to your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and so to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the fruit of creation give you joy this day. May the fruit of salvation, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you even greater joy throughout your life. Peace be with you.